Okay. I'm going to record because I almost forgot to do that. So uh, thanks all for joining us. We're going to be reviewing the Calm Guide to Onboarding Your Members. Um, oh, Jessica, you said, because we had some new people join, I finally used your resource. Yay! About the welcome <laughs> message. Thank you. Glad. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Thank you for using the resources. Um, okay. Uh, Deb, just just so you know, as we as we get started, I um, you won't be able to see me um, every time because I'm on my iPad. Every time I go out of Zoom to go re uh, access something, it'll my picture will just show up. So just so you guys know, it, I'm not leaving the room. No, it's all good. And I was uh, having some internet issues, so I think while I'm um sharing the screen, I'll just keep my video off, and then once we come back, I'll turn it back on, just for everybody, so that you know why my video is off. Um, so the in the resources section, um, the second guide here, the calm guide to onboarding is the one we're going over. Um, you should be able to get access with this. I did something really funky. And so there's a bunch of people in here that don't belong in here, but they will get removed. I just am talking to my networks about how to do that because I added something to something and now I can't remove members for some reason. So um, I've got to help ticket in with money networks because I'm kind of stuck with it. But with that being said, um, section, so section one, I'll just do a quick review. Section one, we did um, discuss about creating an onboarding plan. Uh, we discussed like why, um, what is onboarding? Why is it important? And we talked about how you, you create your, on, you, your own unique onboarding plan. And then in section two, which we did last month, we talked about connecting your members and sparking conversation. We talked about how you can cultivate a community garden and create a safe space, um, create belonging, have some fun social events to connect your members. And then in this session, we're gonna be talking about how to create growth. So how do you grow your money network? Kathy has a lot of growth right now, which is fantastic. In my celebration for this month, is I hit my goals for the community. And I'm so happy because my goals were, um, you know, to get you know, $500 a month from the community. And that, that was my financial goal. And my member goal has been hit. And so I'm really excited to continue to grow the Fine Calm Here community. And it's with your help. So thank you so much. We're gonna talk um, about three steps that I'm sharing here to growing your community. First, we're gonna go over creating a growth plan um, and that's gonna go over recruiting new members, creating ambassador programs and looking at your retention rates. Um, section two or step two is gonna be benchmarking and milestones to create your gro growth plan and aligning them with your business goals. And then step three is um, growth with your a member first focus. So I didn't do videos this time for all of them. I did a video for the first one. And then I thought, you know, you guys let me know if the videos are helpful or not. This is one thing about awareness. When we're talking about clarity, awareness, learning, and motion with the call method, I'm noticing I'm, I'm like paying attention. Well, there's not a lot of people like actually watching the videos because I can look on YouTube and see the stats. So maybe that's something I don't even have to worry about. Maybe it's not helpful. So you let me know. That's another thing I wanted to ask. And you can let me know later on um, if when you're in these guides, if videos where, where I'm talking through things, if that's helpful, and if it's not, what, what would be helpful there? Um, so I went through the call method with this first uh, step to create your growth plan. I talk about how to get clear on recruiting new members really starts with, we talked about connecting your members in, in section two, and it really starts with what's been working. What's, what have your members said that's really working already? Where are you seeing, like kind of looking at members that you've onboarded and either asking them or seeing their, you know, whether they're participating in a course or whether they're really getting into the activities or whether they're commenting or sharing things, but look at the people who are really being active and how you onboarded those people and what has worked to kind of expand on that. And then once you know, like awareness component is about, okay, once you know what's been working, looking at different ways to invite people. So maybe you focused on one specific social media, like Facebook or Instagram, where maybe are, your, are people hanging out that you don't know about yet. So maybe consider spending time in other communities, which is what I've done recently is 
meeting new people and networking. I just started doing some clubhouse chats and I've gotten really great success with just connecting with new entrepreneurs that could be potential. And one lady I met in a clubhouse and she's like, yeah, I want to hire you. <laughs> uh, so it's just been amazing that I've met these people in these clubhouse chats and I schedule a, you know, a, a connect session with them for 30 minutes. And after that 30 minutes, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool what you're doing. And um, it's just been a really helpful for me to, you know, tap into these, these other areas that I haven't really considered yet. So just thinking about maybe other places to recruit for new members, figuring out, talking to the current members and maybe asking them. Um, that's going into the ambassador program. The learning component is um, maybe your members want to share your community. They just haven't been really told that they're okay. It's allowed to do that, or they haven't been, you know, it hasn't been clear to them that, oh, you can share this with other people, right? So um, there might be some of that. Maybe um, if you have an ambassador program and it isn't being utilized, maybe reviewing um, some of what you have set up in your ambassador program. Does anybody have an ambassador program right now? I think, Kathy, do you have one? Yeah, you have, you have one. Um, I have an ambassador program, <laughs> but it hasn't been utilized. And so maybe I need to just restructure or reframe and, um, you know, what other things can I do to build growth in the Find Calm Here community? And those are things that you as members could, could help me with. I don't really like to look, and I talk a little bit here about the difference between affiliate program and ambassadors. For, if you have a product or a service, affiliation is great. You know, if you're referring people to a product or a service that's going to help them, that's a great thing. And I think it makes sense to get a kickback of like, you know, percentage as we do with some of these companies that, that are, have great, really great affiliate programs, Muddy Network, not there yet. But <laughs> um, when you're talking about your community, I really feel like it's more about the connection and the desire for them intrinsically, not extrinsically. So not giving them a financial reward or any, any kind of a specific monetary reward, but just saying, if you feel like this place has really, really helped you, I really encourage you to share this with other people. And not that you're gonna get anything in, in, in return for that, except for maybe a friend will be really excited that you've shared this with them and then they can come in and participate with you. So I think there's a lot of mixed thoughts on this. And I see that in the Mighty, now it's it's Mighty Host, but now it's Mighty Community. They rebranded. And I see some of this in there. And I think it depends on what your community structure is. You know, if you are a business networking and if you are based on monetary goals in that sense, then maybe it is appropriate to do an affiliate program. But for most of the you and the people that I work with, for the most part, we're really trying to create some kind of transformation and helping people in a deeper way. And I feel like when you put monetary dollars to that, then it gets a little fuzzy around. Then people are like, oh, if I'm going to make money, then I'll just, <laughs> you know, that's it just goes into like that place. Those are my thoughts on, um, a, you know, affiliate versus ambassador. The Mighty Network does have an ambassador program set up. I did this video and this is a longer video. It goes into a bunch of detail where I showed, and I'm not going to do it right now because of the time, but I go into sharing how I set up my affiliate program, the benefits that I have set up in there, and then um, how you can get the badges for your, and then also I did just was talking to a client about this yesterday and I realized that they actually have the ability for you. So if you don't know the affiliate or the ambassador program is in the premium analytics, oops, not premium analytics, um, premium features. And you can either turn on and off the ambassador program and you can turn on and off the rewards. So I think this was one toggle at one point and, or, somehow you could add rewards later, but now it's, it's separate things. So you could just do badges where people, you know, they get a little badge when they invite like, you know, two or 10 people or I think the mighty network, you have to get to 10 to get to silver. So right now I, and I didn't always use my share link, which is the other thing for <laughs> about the ambassador program. They have to use the right share link for you to, for them to get the credit. 
uh, on the badge. But where am I going with this? If you look on my profile, it says I'm a bronze because I invited at this point nine people with that share link. And once I hit 10, I'll get to silver. And then I think gold is 20. That's a lot of members. And so I don't necessarily know that a reward makes sense for those designations, which is why I changed my, my reward system so that you don't have to get so many members <laughs> before you can get some kind of reward. But those are things to consider when you're looking at an ambassador program. Um, you could just have the badges for now and then decide later when you talk to members, you know, what rewards, if any, would make sense. And then in the last section here, I talk about the member journey. Um, in section two, we um, reviewed analytics and, and talked about, we, uh, not analytics, we reviewed participation. And then in this section, I also talk and go over in that video about analytics. And I talked a little bit about analytics before. I don't want to get too deep into analytics, but um, it's a good place to like just look and see who your most active members are. It can also help you see who's not active. And before you lose them, you could actually kind of track their progress and reach out to them at different points to make sure you don't lose them. And so that's kind of going, this is kind of going into retention where I feel like there's a lot of things that you can do to keep members in the community before they leave. Um, but not everybody's gonna stay. You know, some people come and get what they need and then leave. And some people, you know, stay because of the, the community and they have the time and wanna show up and participate. And then other time we're just like, oh, other people are just like, this isn't the time for me. And so, it's just, um, so I just kind of state that sometimes it's not that it's anything about your programming or your events, but it's really just about the time that they have to be able to commit to this space. Um, and maybe they got what they needed and then they move on. So those are just things to consider. I have a worksheet here that I put together that just, just outlines all of these things for you to put in there, writing out, um, your plan to recruit new members, how will you connect? Where will you find them? Um, maybe if you've gone to the same places, what new places can you find to, to talk to new people or meet and network with new people that could be potential members? Um, awareness around what's your, what you already know about your, your network members and how you can leverage to start maybe cultivating new connections um, and bringing new members in with asking like, your current members of who they might think in their circle would be benefit from this resource. Joanne's coming. Okay. Learning is about um, the ambassador program. We talked about how maybe you want to encourage members to invite others to your network, identifying the potential of, you know, what, what do I want here and how many people do I want in this space? Kathy had some goals of like 50, you know, and she achieved her goal of over 50 people. Do you want 50 people in there? You know, it just depends on your space and what you're capable of, you know, work, how many people you want to work with and kind of identifying that too. Um, writing out your member journey is the other part of this and just identifying like where the members are. We talked a little bit in the last a workshop about the commitment curve and how people, you know, come in and come out and some people get really excited about something and then dip out. Um, so just talking about that and, and maybe, and again, <laughs> talking to members and just asking them like either in messages or just casually during Zoom calls around how you could make it a more personalized experience for people or making sure that they're getting what they need. And I have a little bit of a growth plan here that I shared. Um, for myself. So currently I'm going to reach out to new, to new connections and create a personal invitation, uh, inviting them to a, a video call. And then I'm just going to send them a personal email and talking about what I'm doing inside the network to follow up. I'm going to use the place that I'm going to go is LinkedIn because I feel like that is the best place where my, my potential ideal members are going to be hanging out and Clubhouse, because that's where a lot of entrepreneurs are. So those are the two like platforms that I'm going to put my intention and focus into when I'm looking at recruiting. Um, I'm looking at a schedule um, to block out. So um, 
scheduling emails, messages, or events. And Monday afternoons are like my best time for that for me. So that's what I identified is like the time when I will block Monday afternoon for my initiatives to grow my community. So that's specifically a time that I book, that I say from two to four on Monday afternoon, I'm gonna reach out to people on LinkedIn. I'm gonna connect with people on Clubhouse or I'm gonna you know, send emails or, or that kind of thing to work on my growth plan. So I've dedicated a time to it. And then um, why I'd like to grow. So how many members and why is that important to me? It's another important point of just, you know, I'd like to get to 50 members by the end of 2021. I don't know if that's going to be realistic for me right now. It might not be. I only have 25 members right now. And then that would mean that I'd have to have potential of, you know, 10 members per month over the next, and I counted, uh, I was counting September, which is almost halfway, <laughs> or like a 10th. So, um, and then over the next four months, I'd have an intention of converting. So if I am inviting that many people, my conversion rate is like maybe five to six people per month. So I'm probably not going to hit 50. That would be really great, but that's probably not where I'm going to go. But that that's just a overall concept, an ex, like a example. Um, and so then I have um, a challenge here for you to post your own growth plan in the community to let us know and inspire others. So that was step one. Before I move on, did anybody have questions about all I just went over? And I know we've got 20 minutes, so I'm going to bust through the other two sections in a minute here. No, everybody's good. All right. You, just let me know if you're if you have a question. Um, the next section is about benchmarking, and the other two sections are shorter. Um, benchmarks and milestones. So I think it's sometimes hard. We see this big idea of you know 50 members or 100 members or having a dollar amount, and that can be really hard and frustrating when you're like feeling like you're not getting to those places. So I feel like it's super important and helpful for you to benchmark through your process. Uh, in the beginning of this call, I was talking about uh, how our Mighty Mastermind in the beginning of the year was a little bit more structured, and we had some uh, goal setting, and we talked about a growth plan for 30, 60, and 90 days, and so now I'm talking a little bit more, now that we've kind of identified in the first step, we looked at, you know, what's working with our community, we talked about retention, and then we talked about how do we grow and encourage people to join, and where am I going to find these new people? So we have identified our growth plan in the first step. The second step is now talking about, okay, what's the timeline? Let me get a little bit more clearer on specifically, like, can I make this work in my schedule over the next 30, 60, 90 days? And how is that going to look on my calendar? Um, what else do I say here? Timeline. So writing out your timeline for what, oh, this is also good. I talk about going into your history. One of my clients recently had a history of, um, he, he's been doing community for over two years. So I looked at all of the history of, all, of over what they've done over the past two years and then kind of evaluated that and said, well, what does that mean for the future? So I talk a little bit about here about writing your timeline from the first time that you thought about community which might have been a while ago for, for some people. It might have been uh, not so long ago for some other people. Um, but what you actually built and launched and how long your members have been inside and what goals did you have in the beginning? And maybe now looking at it in a fresh new perspective of saying, okay, here's what I've done. Here's what I learned. And now I feel like I get it, like this is the more realistic goal or this is what I now wanna focus on and shifting focus to different things. So I just talked about like really identifying your, your history and your timeline and then reviewing. Did you achieve the results that you wanted to hit from that first plan from the first time you launched, if you have launched already? And then, you know, what did you learn from the past experiences and then taking action of like, okay, I've learned all this stuff and now I'm moving forward into a new plan of like a restructuring. A lot of the clients, um, well, one of the clients I'm working with right now, we're doing a restructure and 
it's really about, okay, what worked in the past? What didn't work? So we can like make sure that we have more things that work <laughs> and less things that don't work, right? So that's kind of what we're in this evaluation stage right now with that client. And it's been really interesting. We're in the validation for the first month we're doing validation. And so I've been asking members in polls because now I'm the community transition manager is my title for this role. <laughs> And so I'm in a community of 7,000 people, and I'm trying to get responses from a poll about our new transition and some of the benefits to understand, is this going to be helpful for these new members or not? Because we're moving from a free model to a paid donation model. And so now I need to figure out, okay, well, how do I get these people to stay if they're interested in staying and see that it's um, worth their donation investments kind of thing? So those are just things that we're reviewing with that client, but I wanted to just give you that as like a example of how you can kind of look at restructuring. And then I have what you're doing. Yeah. Can I just ask a question here? Of course. Um, kind of of, of everyone. Um, does anyone else have a goal and it feels, it feels, um, you know, like it's pushing beyond your comfort zone and yet it feels kind of doable like you you put a plan into place and then uh not long after that start to feel um like a little bit discouraged in some and dif for different reasons and in different ways so I'll set a goal and then I'll immediately feel like oh like I, I don't know I have these uh a lot of doubts will come up like am I um am I really offering something I mean I mean I know that people um, connect to what I'm offering. Um, and yet I, I will immediately start to have all these self doubts. So I, I don't know. I'm just thinking not that you can address all of this, but with this being the calm is like, I, I at some point I'm just starting to, if anyone else feels this way, um, it has like self doubt start to creep in, um, after setting a goal, I think it could be a really cool um, thing to have like a little bit of encouragement in this guide for getting beyond that self doubt just a thought. Yeah. I see um, head, heads nodding. I must not be the only one that has a no, little bit No, no. And that's, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to express here in, in this section in step two is that exact thing of marking small benchmarks so that you're not feeling disappointed if you set a goal of 50 members by three months from now and that doesn't happen. You're not waiting for that goal to happen. You've set other benchmarks up. So maybe there's other places for you to be able to be excited about. So it's not so much about, um, you know, hitting or not hitting. But you always, I think what helps me is just kind of talking with people and, and, and validation. The biggest thing I'll tell you with this project that I'm working on with this transition manager um, is getting him the results that he wants. And he doesn't really have a goal right now. He doesn't have like, I want to convert, you know, a thousand members or something like that. But I want to make sure that we have good conversion rates because that's part of my role. And so that's not a guarantee, but I'm trying to make it successful by really spending time getting to know the members with these polls. And then some of them are private messaging me now because He's now announced in, that I'm the transition man manager in for this community. So he's now, you know, there's people that are now personally reaching out to me because we've expressed, we have a clear message. Well, let's not say clear, but we have a general message right now about things are going to change here is what we're communicating right now. Because the team, and I'm talking about the Mindful Living Collective, just in case anybody doesn't know. So I'm working with Elijah for, with the Mindful Living Collective as the transition manager because they're moving from a paid model to, or sorry, from a free model to a paid slash donation model. And the, the biggest thing that I want to have is success that he gets people connect, not just, you know, signing up and joining, but also we want to create engagement because that community is kind of like, dead and it's because they had really great success in their like smaller programs but not a whole lot of success in that main network so that's what I'm tasked with trying to do I feel like if I would say I want to have a thousand members on our first launch 
that's unrealistic. Even though it's 7,000 people that we're looking at, a lot of those people are just, once we move it to a different model, they probably are going to identify that this might not be the best place for them for whatever reason. Maybe they have other places that they're doing. And so their investment goes to other places. So I just, um, hopefully that helped a little bit, Jessica. And if there's other things I can do um, to help you find calm, please let me know, because that's my goal here. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's really helpful to just, I think the better you know your members and the better plan, you can always have a plan, but it's really about getting the validation. So I'm trying to make my, um, my project successful because I'm getting validation from everyone who, who's then telling me this is what we're doing. And even another client, I'll tell you, I'm just starting with another client that's an author and he's not launched yet at all. And we're kind of in the discovery phase. And he has this big course and he wants to bring all these people in. And I'm working with his assistant mostly. And he's like, got all these big ideas. And I'm like, we got to validate. You got your Facebook group of 700 people. Do they want to move to somewhere else? And then how much are they willing to invest? So we literally put together a survey and ask them, would you invest $25 a month? Would you invest $47 a month or whatever? Um, then, we, then we know. So instead of like, I think what I did in the beginning when I did my lunch was I shot, everything was a shot in the dark and I was just kind of like guessing, but the better you are at validating every step, the more successful you're gonna be. And then you can know, all right, this makes sense. Now, obviously you start with a vision before you go to asking people, right? So you identify your vision first for the network what you're gonna do there, who you're bringing together and why and all that kind of foundational stuff. And then you're just kind of refining it with, okay, here's what I'm thinking. And then let's make sure that what I'm thinking aligns with like what y'all wanna do in the community, like what I talked about earlier. Um, I'm gonna go back and just finish this up real quick so that we can go to a few questions. So I have a, I have a smart goal you know, they're specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. And then I have a worksheet for you to go over to identify your goals. And this is kind of what I talked about in the beginning of what are your business goals, what are your community goals, and how do they align together to make it easier for you? So you can look at that later. The third step is about looking at growth from a member first perspective, which is kind of what we've been talking about all along, but I just kind of want to hit home the, the point that you can have so many goals and you can be all excited about programs, but you, there's a lot of other stuff to consider. Um, now that we've talked about like some time-based realistic measurable goals, it's time to think about scalability. So you can, these are things that I'm reviewing with this client when we're doing the restructure. Are all your topics being utilized? Because this is now talking about your time and your effort. Like I said in the beginning, I'm thankful for everybody to use my resources, but I'm really trying to pay attention to what resources aren't being used because if I'm creating something that's not helpful or that's just not being utilized, then I don't wanna spend more time doing that because I could spend my time focused on other things that are going to be, um, that are going to be consumed. So I just talk about the topics. I talk about um, what are your most active groups and courses uh, if you're on the business plan. Maybe you could nominate a moderator in that space. Maybe there's a really active space that you've been involved in, but you can identify somebody as a leader of that little group and then say, hey, I really would love it if you would be able to moderate this group for me. Um, you could be the leader of this group and maybe you offer them, you know, that you could lead their, they could lead like a monthly event or however you feel is appropriate to like maybe incentivize them to want to moderate. But I think those and volunteers, like asking people to volunteer. Um, the next thing I talk about is community management. Um, a lot of us are all being a community manager and a community host at the same time. Pretty much everybody in this room is. Um, I've been a community manager and I'm currently gonna be a community manager for this community of 7,000, which will probably end up being a lot less when we transition. But if you don't have a community manager, <laughs> here are some things that I am helping you with that I have found that are helping me find calm, that help me reduce the amount of time that I'm spending 
on content or things in the community that are that I'm finding I thought it was a good idea, but then it just didn't work out because the members told me or they're just not participating in something. And so those are just examples. I have like this post, I did some screenshots of just things that are in the community right now that I found that help me get more engagement and feedback from people so I can identify what content's working. And then if you go to the analytics section, you'll be able to see um, what your most popular posts are. So those are other ways that you can identify what is content is being really used here. And are my members all really getting the benefit of either attending live events, as well as how is my time being utilized in the Mighty Network? So that's the end of that, but I will just give you a heads up for next month, um, not for the Mighty Mastermind, but for the Find Calm Here community, I'm doing a tech integration workshop. And so we did this in, I think, July, and the next one will be in October, and I'm going to go over section two. And so what I thought about was the onboarding, now that we've kind of like identified all of these ways to like structure, we want to talk about how to streamline your experience. And so that's what the tech integration guide is. So how do you, how do you really like do community where you're feeling like things are going great? It's, it's not overwhelming. You're enjoying the time that you spend in the community and you're getting the results you want. Like, how do we make that perfect storm? If you could say, how do we make that happen? And so that's what I'm going to be talking a little bit about with the tech tech integration is how we can kind of streamline some stuff that are helpful um, to save some time as well as hopefully grow your network. So, okay, I'm done talking. Speak or forever hold your peace. <laughs> um, I wanted to say to Jessica, I completely feel um, her pain so when I, I started my community on um, November 9th, and this is the third iteration of this community, um, I, I started with Mighty Networks in May of last year with, um, a, with a completely different concept of what I'm in now. And I tried a course and whatever. So where I'm at now though, I started in November. And that, first uh, cohort of people in November was literally me asking if you want to continue this conversation, you know, um, and you're willing to pay me $10. I have this space. I've already paid for it. And I would love to continue this conversation and grow this group. I had seven people join. One person paid the $10. I was like, okay, if I get that to one person, I can get two people. So I held free, I was, I'm holding free virtual meetups and then inviting people into the paid community. And every time I did that, I would raise the price $5. So it was 15, then 20, 25, until I got to 30. And my goals, so I had set my goals. My goals were to get eight new members a month. And I was doing that up until I hit the $30 mark. When I hit the $30 mark, it, I got four new members. And so I stopped raising the price at that point. And I was, I, I started doubting myself. I was like, well, maybe I went too high. Maybe I can't get people to pay me $30. What should I drop it back down to 25 or $20? And what I did was yeah. actually sat with Deb and had my growth seat around that time. And wow. Deb said, you're giving, you're, you're giving too much away. Your, your price should be higher. And I, here I am thinking I should go lower. And so I was just like, okay, so I'm not going to lower my price. I'm just going to leave it the same, but eventually I will raise it. And I am going to raise it um, in the future, but I'm, right now I'm going to keep it at 30. And let me tell you, like month two, two months into going 30, I was only still, again, four new members. But um, since then, it's been about another two, three months since then, I am now starting to get 
eight members joining the community at $30. So those fears, if I would have lowered it back then, I wouldn't see the fruition now. So stay with the fear a little bit and you know see how it works out um, and just give it time, give it time. And the beautiful thing is I'm not like having to cultivate uh, all the leads. Like in the beginning, it was me reaching out to people, telling them about the community and everything. Now people are starting to find us through the website and just joining without ever talking to somebody about the community, which is huge, humongous. So. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm so excited for you, Kathy. You need to send me that in an email so that I can put that on my website, please. Okay. <laughs> I know we still have to. So now that I'm incorporated, I'm starting the nonprofit, setting everything up is like freaking crazy. Um, but I am, I do want to come on the podcast and talk about everything, your process and everything, because you, you have been very helpful and the Viacom community has been very helpful. Even okay. just to come and kind of, listen to everybody else and talk about what I'm doing. It's been so helpful. Cool. Well, I'm glad. Does anybody else have any feedback around the uh, onboarding calm guide or any other things that you'd like to say before we close out? It just, it was awesome. I love how you, what you've done, you know, what you're doing. So it's fantastic. Thank you, Ani. Cool. I mentioned at the beginning, Joanne is saying, thanks for putting it together. Okay. Um, I mentioned in the last, in the beginning of this, and I think Joanne and Kathy, you might've come later, uh, for next month, somebody had volunteered to do a growth seat and I don't remember who it was. I think it's Colleen or I think it's uh, Sandra. But I'm going to check with some people. So next month, we for October, we might do a growth seat. Oh, Jessica wants to know where the growth seat is. Okay, so sorry. I will explain the growth seat real quick. Um, instead of, I don't know if you've heard of the term hot seat, but in the entrepreneurial world, people have these hot seats. And basically what that means is that they are on basically a stage, whatever it's a virtual stage or it's a real stage or in front of a room. We've done, when I've been in in-person events, I actually did this with my, the Location Indie community when we had our Denver event and I, I went to Denver and we had somebody sit up on the front and they talked about what they're working on, which, which is their project uh, or their business idea. And then everybody kind of like said, well, what about this? And what about this? And it's like a little stressful, but it, it's like helps you break through. And the person that was on that hot seat in 2018 said she set a date to quit her, her job she, she quit her job before that date and she launched her, all her stuff. And she's massively successful as an artist working full-time and in the uh, LA, I think uh, San Francisco, I forget what area she's in California, but I think she's LA area of California and she's been really successful. And so what I found from that um, was that growth seats or, or hot seats are really powerful. And so I wanted to incorporate that in our sessions. And so with an, I led another group, um, another mastermind that I started last November uh, for people who wanted to start a business. And so I ran that 90 day mastermind. And then I also had run our, our mighty mastermind from January until March. And we did growth seats between March and April. And so we modified those because I was going to say hot seat. And then one of the members, uh, Amelia, who's in the community, said, that sounds stressful. You should make it a growth seat. So I said, well, that's a great idea. So I'm not, I'm not taking the credit, Amelia. If you watch the replay, I'm giving you the credit <laughs> and saying that you came up with the name. But basically, it's just about us, um, each one of us, Ani, Kathy, Carol, and myself and Joanne, we all shared our community, either relaunch strategy where Ani shared her business strategies and what she's working on with her business. And we gave feedback and we can ask questions and just it really helps you get clear on other ways to like the lens which with you see things. So we have this great idea. We spend so much time on a project, but we only have the lens with what we're looking through. And that gives you the ability to get the lens of other people who really want you to succeed. It's not just going on Facebook and saying, hey, here's my logo. Let me know what you think. This is really in depth about 
How much am I charging for my money network? How am I launching my next product or service? Um, does this make sense for me to pitch it this way? It's just very specific in a group where we know we're not out there to like be mean to each other or say, oh, this sucks. It's like, no, this is really great. Here's what I feel like would make it even better. And it's just these little tweaks. And that's what helped. That's how I launched the Find Calm Here community because I presented my launch plan during my growth seat. I said, here are my ideas. I got feedback from everybody. And then I kind of re-strategized. And then I launched in, in, did a soft launch in May and then did the full launch in June and then started onboarding members. And it, it was really helpful. So that's the growth seat. Um, if you'd like to do one, Jessica, I'm happy to have you do one. Um, so I was mentioning next month, we'll either have somebody do a growth seat or we will do a discussion around how we can go forward and support each other in the new year. Because I'd really like to have us all kind of set a goal. And I know we talked about this in the other sections today, but um, I think it would be really fun because I thought that was really helpful in the beginning of 2021. I thought that might be a nice goal for 2022 for everybody in here. And I'll get some of the other members who didn't get an opportunity to participate in that session that now that we have a bunch of new members in here for all the, uh, all the old other people that already went through this, I'd like to get the new members involved. And my, I had some people reach out to me about the Muddy Mastermind, and I was thinking about reopening that like as a selling it to the public kind of a thing. But I think right now, I really just want to make sure I'm growing and building relationships between people on Find Calm here. So what I'd like to do is just offer that as an included. So nobody knows about this yet. This is just my thing that I just came up with in the last 24 hours. But what I'd like to do is have it included in the, in the membership of Find Calm Here so that everybody who's in the Find Calm Here community has the ability to join on these sessions. And we'll, we'll do the little structure that we did before, but we'll add the element that everybody gave me feedback about, which was giving you an assignment and then checking back in the following week to see if you've done that assignment or not, to have a little bit more accountability, but also grace around understanding us and being supportive when life gets in the way. So um, let me know all your thoughts on that. Uh, either shoot me an email or a message um, or just post in the community if you have thoughts around what would really help you uh, to end the 2020 in a really great way and to get you really excited about your community building efforts in 2022. So with that, I'm good. Thank you all for being here. I'm glad it was great. Anybody have, if anybody has questions, yeah. I can hang a minute. What do you say? I just had a question for you, Deb. Do you want, um, so I noticed in the guide, when I looked at it the first time, and then also when you showed us now, your, um, if we're ready, you're asking if we would be willing to share our goal. Do you want us to do that in the community still? Um, Cause I, I think I could develop, I could take a look at this and follow the guide and, and, um, and share a goal and going through that. Yeah. Yeah, let me know if, again, if you have questions while you're going through that, then just ping me and I can okay. even do a little video for you or, or, or a short audio note. Um, if there's something that's not clear, because, you know, this is the first iteration, like, like Kathy was saying before, we go mm -hmm. through these different iterations and, and it gets really great. It gets better and better. A year ago, this is what I wanted. I was like, this is what's supposed to happen. And now I'm getting what I wanted a year later. And so it's just exciting. But it's like, you have to like, uh, like, this is what I wanted a year ago, but I'm so glad I'm here now. Right. So yeah, any, anything I can do to help you with the launch guide or I'm sorry, the onboarding guide and anything else. Cool. Okay. Cool. Cool. Any, anyone else have a final question? I know you guys are hanging out a little bit longer. If you want to, anything else? No, everybody's just kind of doing their thing. <laughs> All right, Joanne, I need to get in touch with you. I synced up with you in a, in a message. So I will, um, Sync up. Yeah, I sent you a message, so I'll sync yeah. up with you later. Okay. Okay. Sounds so. good. Bye, everyone. Bye. Right. Bye.